In computer animation, uh, especially when you are animating on ones, meaning a new image every 24, I mean a new image every frame for 24 frames uh, of film, uh, there's a thing you need to do called moving holds. Everybody knows about moving holds. There's confusion though about what's a, what does it do? I mean, what's a good one? Um, one of the things I want to talk about right now is direction of a moving hold. Uh, the easiest way for me to understand it or think about it is that a moving hold is nothing more than an ease. That just takes a little bit longer to figure out, okay? Because if you hit a pose, you know, you don't want to come up and hit a pose and then just stop and go straight across and do nothing, okay? You don't, you don't want that. You want to keep it alive a little bit. You want to keep it moving. But the thing you want to do is you want to make sure it's going in the same direction that it was going, okay? Here's an example. I'm going to go ahead and um, see here. I'm going to hide this guy. Oops, that's right. He's got keyframes on that business. Well then, I will go ahead and kill the keyframes on the visibility. You are dead. Goodbye. You are dead. Goodbye. Okay. So let me uh, let me hide that for a moment. What we have here is if your moving hold moves backwards, it doesn't it doesn't feel right. Let's have a look. If we have this guy move forward, and he begins his move at uh, frame 24, he comes forward, and in, by frame 33, he's kind of hit his pose. Okay, so his pose is right there. But the moving hold slides backwards. Do you see that? I can zoom in even more if you like. Oop. Now what we don't want is that. We don't want the moving hold to kind of, we don't want to hit something and then kind of waggle our way back during the moving hold. Why? Because it feels weightless. It's like, Bleh. there's just no substance to it. It just, it feels wrong. What you'd rather do is something like this guy right here, where he goes forward and then his moving hold goes in the same direction. Okay, so he, he hits his pose right there, but then the moving hold just keeps them going in the same direction. That tends to add more weight to it. How does that look in the, our lovely little spaghetti box? Well, let's have a look. This guy, if we were to take a look at his spaghetti box, his Translate X is right there, but let's take a look at the pose. All right, Here he hits his pose, but Notice that it still just kind of eases a little bit into an extreme. And that's another definition for it. He hits the pose and then eases, eases, eases into an extreme, which is really all the moving hold is. It's just this uh, slow, steady easing into an extreme. And you can get in there and really, you know, make this even more precise in any number of ways. But there your value is 20.509, and here it's 20.67. So it's changing, but it's changing in the same direction. This fellow right here, his moving hold is not so good because he's hitting it and then kind of sliding back. And the difference is that it just doesn't feel like it has any weight. So if you're having, if you're having struggles trying to figure out, gosh, you know, which way, sh what is my moving hold, what it should look like, just keep that in mind. You don't want to waggle back. You want to slowly ease into a more extreme version of it. Now, <clears throat> when we hit an overshoot and settle back, it gets a little more extreme. Let's take a look at that. Let's say um, a guy is going to go wah like that, or he, he hits something and bounces back, which is a pretty, it's something you use in a, in a kind of more violent or more cartoony or a, a dynamic kind of move. It's overused a bit, I think, by, uh, by younger animators, but We'll take a look at what that looks like. Let's say we have this guy right here. And we want him to slide out here and hit this pose really, really hard, but then settle back rather quickly into something like this. See? I'm just going to go ahead and delete this frame right there. All right, so he comes and he hits this really strong moment. And generally when you're going to hit that, oops, you're not going to have it ease in like this. You're going to have very linear into it. 
So it, it's very, very bam. It's like you hit a, hit a wall or something. <coughs> and so you get here. Looks good. Which way should the moving hold do go then? Hmm. Should the moving hold go back in this direction where it goes up? Um, well, the problem with that is it it just feels weightless again. See that? It come, it bounces back, but slides the other direction. It feels all wrong. No, actually you want the moving hold, and I don't know if you can see that because my picture might be in the way, you want the moving hold to continue the, the last direction that it went. So the last direction after the big hit here was it went back and settled. All right, that's, a, that's an overshoot and settle back. But the moving hold is a slight little in the same direction. So really it's just think about and you can see that that has a nice feel to it. I can zoom in nice and big and it just has a nice feel to it. And you can you can ease that a little bit more. You can do that in graph editor here where you can play around with these curves and, and do all kinds of things if you like. Um, and you know there you go. It's pretty simple. Or if you don't like messing with curves like me, you can just you know, borrow some frames or whatever. But anyways, there you go. Simple little thing on moving holds, which way to go, and it's uh, it's all performance related. Hopefully that helped and um, maybe cleared up a little confusion for you. Just gives you a good guideline to go on when you're building your holds so that they don't feel weightless. All right.